G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I thought I'd have another crack at our power ranking series. Forgive me, I didn't do this last week. I actually prepared it, did all the prep. I think it ran out of time. So we're back this week and essentially ranking all the teams from 1st to 18th based on a combination of form and generally how well poised they are to go deep this year. There is a particular focus on the last five games. And so as usual, we will start off from the bottom of the ladder and work up to the top. So... Surprise, surprise, I've decided to keep the same bottom three that I've kept basically this entire season. West Coast are clearly the worst team in the competition. Richmond are now the only other team to go 0-5 in their last five, but nonetheless still playing with a lot more competitive spirit. I suppose West Coast did challenge Brisbane, but I thought Richmond were pretty good against both the Giants, the Power. Um, you know, Generally speaking, I think it's fair to say that Richmond have been more competitive than West Coast in the last five games. Then I've got North Melbourne, and North Melbourne are on the edge, on the precipice of moving up a spot. They just fell short against the Blues. They got annihilated the week before against the Swans, but other than that, some of their losses have been good. They were good against the Bulldogs, who were a very good team. They nearly beat the Demons. They beat the Suns also in their last five. So clearly ahead of the bottom two, and, and arguably pushing up to go ahead of the next team. Now, the next three teams I have to separate are, are pretty difficult, but I've got Collingwood as the next Worst side on current form in the competition going one and four. So only one other team has gone one and four in their last five, and that's North Melbourne. So I did consider putting North Melbourne higher because Collingwood was so badly beaten against Hawthorne, but I'm probably not quite there yet considering North Melbourne also just got slaughtered by Sydney. So the gap between those two sides is very close, and that's interesting when you consider that's first from last year and 17th. But the Pies are struggling. I do think they'll get back to some degree of form and, and at least move out of the bottom four of the power rankings. Um, but I've got Gold Coast ahead of them. In their last five, they've won two games, and one of them was against Collingwood. They also beat Port Adelaide, and their three losses were against Fremantle, North Melbourne, Melbourne, which was disappointing, and GWS as well. St Kilda are up one spot into 13th, and that's coming off a win against the Eagles. In their last five, they've also beaten the Swans, and they've also beaten Gold Coast, I think, six games before that. They've also had some tough losses against the Lions, the Power, and the Adelaide Crows, and all three of those teams have been in decent form recently, so St Kilda definitely improving their form, even if West Coast isn't a big kill at the moment. Above that, I've got Essendon. Essendon slide down a little bit. The last fortnight has been a little bit disappointing. A loss to Melbourne, who have definitely improved, uh, but most recently going down at home to the Adelaide Crows. Again, I didn't think they played super poorly, but naturally, they will start to slide down the rank rankings considering they've only won two of their last five games. One of them was against West Coast and the other against the Collingwood side, whose form is now looking very poor. Still a good chance to make finals, I think, Essendon. Uh, I'm certainly not ruling them out, but on current form, I have Adelaide leapfrogging them. And it's hard to ignore Adelaide. They've won three of their last five. They generally looked improved. They've beaten the Giants, a good side. They beat the Saints convincingly. They beat the Bombers in Melbourne as well. And their two losses in their last five games were against the two best sides of the competition, arguably, in the Brisbane Lions and Sydney. So Adelaide's certainly starting to get their act together and now ranked 11th in my power rankings. Just above that, we've got the Melbourne Football Club who have been a mixed bag. So in their last five, they had an unconvincing win over North. They were far too good for West Coast. And they beat the Bombers, which is a good win, admittedly. Their loss against the Brisbane Lions was pretty damn good at the Gabba. And then they were very disappointing against Fremantle most recently. So a bit of a mixed bag, but on balance, they're looking better than they did maybe in the previous stretch of five games. Still absolutely a contender for the top eight, but 10th in my power rankings. Above that, we've got Port Adelaide, who have won three of their last five. Arguably, their most impressive win was against the Bulldog side, who is in very good form right now. As a side of note, that is the only game that the Bulldogs have lost in their last five. They beat St Kilda, they beat the Tigers, they did lose to the Brisbane Lions convincingly at home, and they lost to the Suns up on the Gold Coast as well. So again, a little bit of mixed bag form. They're going okay, and I've got them as pretty much the middle side of the competition on current form. Then we've got GWS as the eighth best team in the comp with a ledger of three and two over their last five. That included a good win against the Blues, who are a very good side. They beat the Suns most recently. There was also a win against the Tigers at the MCG, and their two losses were against the Crows in Adelaide, the Crows have improved. I still think the Giants were a bit disappointing. And they, of course, lost to Sydney, who are a very good team. So yeah, it's pretty much a middle-of-the-pack kind of ledger. Now, I've shaken up my top seven quite a lot because there has been some, some interesting results over the last few. So I've got Geelong sliding down to seventh. They were particularly disappointing against the Western Bulldogs at GMHBA. But around that, some of their form has been good. I think it was the week before they smashed Hawthorne. And they also beat a decent Essendon side by about six goals. They lost to the Blues, who are a good side, and the Bulldogs are also playing some good footy. So they've still got a positive ledger in their last five, but certainly sliding down the rankings. 
Now I've got Sydney in sixth. This might seem a bit harsh. I don't think Sydney are the sixth best side in the competition. So this really is more capturing their form, which is only two wins in their last five. They beat their crosstown rivals, the Giants, and they beat North Melbourne convincingly. And they've had three losses most recently against the Brisbane Lions, which was a good effort if you're going to mark their form. Like they didn't play poorly at all. They lost to St Kilda and they lost to Fremantle at home as well. So I think Sydney are still got probably going to at least play on grand final day this year. But I think if you're measuring it over the last five with a particular focus on their current form, they have to slide down the rankings. And therefore Carlton also slide down a little bit, but not too far. They have won three of their last five, most recently challenged seriously against North Melbourne. They also beat the Tigers. So considering Richmond and North Melbourne are not the strongest of opponents, both feature in my bottom three, only so much to read out of those and a good win over the Cats undoubtedly. They lost to the Giants in Sydney and they lost to the Bulldogs as well. And therefore, without doing a whole heap wrong, they have to slide below the Western Bulldogs, who are now my fourth best side of the competition on current form. There are only two other sides that have gone four and one, and only one side that's gone five and oh. And the Bulldogs are one of those three teams that have gone four and one, with wins over North Melbourne, Fremantle convincingly, Carlton, which is an impressive win, and another good win at GMHBA Stadium. The Port Adelaide loss at Adelaide Oval is their one outlier, but other than that, they're starting to put together some really compelling form, and are looking every bit a finals quality side. And I'd say current form, they're the fourth best team in the comp. Splitting two and three was so hard. I, I actually had it the other way around and I switched it. I'm still not convinced, but I got Hawthorne and Fremantle in second and third. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. But both of these sides are four and one. Both of these sides had one loss. But I think, suppose the difference is Hawthorne lost to Geelong convincingly, not a very good performance. But Fremantle's loss was against Hawthorne. Now it was down in Tasmania, and I do wonder if that had been at Optus Stadium, would Fremantle have won? I'm not completely convinced that Hawthorne deserved to be ahead of Fremantle. Fremantle could justifiably be second, considering they have a win over Sydney in that stretch of form as well. But I suppose the tiebreaker was just that Hawthorne have a win over Fremantle. And then finally, the Brisbane Lions take a top spot once again, going 5-0, and just beat the Sydney Swans at the Gapper. So as far as compelling form goes... Brisbane are the form side of the competition comfortably. And it's an interesting looking top four when you consider the Bulldogs and Hawthorne are not actually in the top eight on the current ladder. But that is the nature of the form. Both of those teams in particular have really surged up the rankings with their form since about round eight, I think it was. I can't remember specifics. I think Hawthorne probably around seven, the Bulldogs probably a little bit more recently than that. But I think that is the form line ranking of the competition at the moment. So let me know in the comments what you think I got right, what you think I got wrong. We're always going to disagree on these. But again, I can't remember doing a power ranking series over a given season where the ladder is so consistently different to the form rankings. So let me know in the comments what you think you got wrong. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.